All right, so uh, our next talk is uh, by Gefeizo. He is a, a fifth year PhD student at uh, UMichigan and he's working with Baris Kazixi. He's interested in research uh, on efficiency and reliability of heterogeneous systems and data centers. Um, uh, so without further ado, uh, I look forward to your talk. Hi, okay. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so, hi, I'm Gafei. Today I'm going to introduce our paper VD, a record replay framework for reconfigurable hardware. FPGA is increasingly adopted in heterogeneous systems. It has been used for various accelerators, such as machine learning database, graph, and network processing. It has also been widely deployed in data centers, such as Amazon and, and Microsoft, where customers can run those FPGAs from uh, cloud services. FPGA is popular uh, because it possesses a unique position in the flexibility and efficiency spectrum of silicon choices. FPGA is essentially a programmable hardware that enables rapid prototyping and faster development iterations. However, we find that even though software developers have access to a long list of uh, helpful tools, we still uh, lack of a vast tooling ecosystem to enable agile FPGA development. So in this paper, our motivation is to bring Record Replay, which used to be a well-studied software building block to the FPGA world. In software, such as a CPU program, we always expect uh, like some external input, such as from network or file, are consumed by the program and affect its execution. Record Replay is to reproduce non-deterministic inputs by recording the input to a trace and replay it at a later time. And then we can recreate program executions for different purposes. For example, we can replay with a debugger for debugging. We can replay with mutated input for testing, can replay with a profiler uh, for performance tuning or replay with a duplicated program state for replication. So we believe like, even though this is for software that recall replay can be very helpful in a similar way on FPGA. So how does that work on FPGA? On a typical FPGA device, as shown in this figure, we have the FPGA chip in the middle, which has access to different types of uh, re uh, resources. Record replay on FPGA is to reproduce inputs at the FPGA boundary. And in this case, that means to record inputs from the, from the interfaces to the external environment, such as the PCIe interface communicating with the CPU, or maybe some interconnect interfaces to the network. And then we can recreate FPGA program executions during replay. There are mainly two challenges for FPGA record replay. The first is that the raw tracing data is enormous. Take the PCIe interface for an example. There are many signals that may change at every clock cycle, and there are multiple interfaces. In a real world setup, such as the Amazon F1 platform, all interfaces contain thousands of bits running at hundreds of megahertz, which translates to a bandwidth that easily saturates uh, PCIe and DRAM. And an immediate workaround is to use abstractions to trace less data. This is possible because signals are often grouped by their semantics to unidirectional communication channel, which basically transmits messages from a sender such as an FPGA to a receiver such as a CPU. The signals in the same channel collaborate with each other and follow a pattern that a single copy of the message can represent the state of the channel for multiple cycles. This pattern is often called transaction. And if you are not familiar with, with this term, you can consider the channel as a network link and the transactions are network packets flowing in the link. By recording and replaying at the transaction level, we can ignore the cycle accurate details. But that brings us to the second challenge, concurrency management. This is because there are usually multiple channels sending transactions concurrently, and the ordering of those transactions are crucial for application correctness. For example, during replay, the response transaction is required to be replayed after the request transaction is sent. Otherwise, invalid ordering often leads to deadlocks, incorrect, re uh, incorrect results, or other undefined behaviors. So in a real world setup such as uh, Amazon F1, there are 25 channels, which makes it challenging to manage which transactions should be ordered and which can happen in parallel. In prior work, there are mainly two approaches. On one side of the design spectrum is uh, cycle accurate tracing. 
it is fine-grained trace signal changes at every clock cycle. As a result, it tracks concurrency accurately, but only has limited tracing capacity. On the other side of the design spectrum is single channel transaction tracing. It abstracts the signal changes in a communication channel as transactions. It traces significantly less data, but will lose track of concurrency when there are multiple channels. In this paper, we want to propose VD, which aims to making a better trade-off in this design space by tracing cost grain transactions together with their ordering information. VD proposes two key ideas. The first is a cost grain input recording, which utilizes the transaction abstraction, but also traces the ordering information while tracking multiple interface, uh, while tracking multiple communication channels. In the two-channel example on the right, VD will basically trace the ordering information shown as dashed arrows, like a transaction one happens before the transaction two. The second key idea of VD is uh, transaction determinism, which no longer guarantee cycle accuracy, but instead preserves both content and ordering of transactions during replay. So as an overview, VD works as an instrumentation on a user-defined boundary. And then we have, as we have seen earlier, the most common boundary is selected to be the entire FPGA device. And then let us take a look at what's inside the FPGA. Uh, for simplicity, CPU and the network are uh, abstracted as an external environment, which is communicating with the FPGA pro uh, program. VD will instrument channel monitors on each communication channel, which traces transactions and forward them to Trace Encoder. Trace Encoder manages the uh, transaction ordering and generate a trace can be stored somewhere else. During replay, Trace Decoder will reconstruct transaction orderings and distribute traces to channel replayers where transactions are created and given to the FPGA application. So now let us take a look at each component. First, we have a channel monitor, which utilizes the following property to trace transactions. First, transactions have well-defined start and end events according to their control signals. And the, the content of the transaction remains unchanged and is only used after the end event. Such atomic-like property enables VD to represent signal changes at multiple cycles as a single transaction. The third property is that the ordering of start and end events matters, but the specific cycle does not. In this example, transaction two and transaction two prime are considered equally as long as they both happen after transaction one ends. In conclusion, Channel Monitor implements our first key idea, cost current input recording. It only tracks transaction content, start and end events. And next we have trace encoder and decoder. They are responsible for managing happens before relationships among transactions. Recalled in the two channel example we have seen earlier, encoder and decoder will track the number of completed transactions in each channel and maintain a vector clock for each start and end event. For example, if we only focus on the start event of these transactions, then a trace will basically say there's no uh, transaction completed on channel A and B before the transaction one in channel A starts. And there's only one transaction in channel A completes when the first transaction in channel B starts, so on and so forth. The event traces together with their vector clocks will be distributed among channel replayers. And channel replayer will compare transactions recorded vector clocks among each other. In this example, the transaction one in channel A has the smallest vector clock, so it happens the first. And the vector clocks of the other two transactions are neither greater or less than each other, so they can happen in parallel. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the channel replayer realizes our second key idea, transaction determinism. It respects vector clocks and enforces happens before relationships during replay. For evaluation, we use FPGAs from the Amazon F1 platform. We configure VD to trace all five interfaces, and the traces are streamed out of the FPGA to the host DRAM. For benchmark, we have two case studies where we select known bugs from prior work or bug trackers. And we also have 10 open source FPGA applications as shown on the right. For effectiveness, we find that all applications work out of the box except for one, the DME application, we need to make a 10-line patch to convert the polling behavior to interrupt. And for efficiency, 
we like the VD does not uh, slow down uh, the application clock frequencies and incurs low performance overhead, about two percentage on average, and uh, single digit percent resource overhead of different FPJ re uh, resources. And then let's uh, take a look at those case studies as an end-to-end -end example of how VD works. In the debugging case study, we use VD to reproduce bugs that escape the simulation and help third-party tools to diagnose the root causes. For example, in there's a data loss bug that uh, not every input transactions are processed by the FPJ. We use VD to replay the problematic trace on an FPJ application that is instrumented by a third-party tool called loss check. And during replay, loss check is able to figure out with specific, what specific queue was overflowed and caused the problem. And for the second testing case study, we use VD to replay a muta uh, mutations of a correct execution trace that has different but valid alternative orderings. And VD is able to find the bug that handles certain corner cases incorrectly. In conclusion, uh, VD is an open source FPJ record replay framework targeting uh, Amazon F1 platform and evaluated on many applications. It is effective and, e and efficient. We conclude that transaction determinism is sufficient for many FPJ applications. And when there is a trade-off to make, VD favors practical utility over cycle accurate guarantees. And in the end, it incurs low performance and resource overhead. Thank you, and now I'm open to take any questions.